Hey guys, today we're going to go over what's called geometric mean. Um, geometric mean is if both the means are the same, then the positive square root of the product. And you'll, that'll make sense in a minute. Hold on. Okay, so if both means are the same, the answer is the positive square root of the product. So in other words, both of these are the same. They're both x's, which means that my answer would be, and if I cross multiplied, would be x squared. And then I cross multiply this way, a times b. And then if I would, of course, take the square root to get x by itself. So that's what I mean by um, if both those means are the same, then the answer is going to be the positive square root of the product of the extremes. So find the geometric mean between 8 and 10. So all that means is that you would take the square root of 8 times 10. Like that. Which would be 80. And the reason why you do that is because you would really set it up like this. And cross multiply, but your the end result is the same. You would end up with the square root of 80. Which, remember I told you in the last one, now that we have officially taught you how to reduce square roots for a day, you're going to have to reduce this thing. So the square root of 80 is the exact same thing as the square root of 16 times 5, which is the square root of 16 and the square root of 5, which means that it is 4 square roots of 5. Um, in Schoology, whenever you go to do this answer on your test, it will be 4, and you'll have to do SQRT 5. And it's just because there is no square root symbol to put in a Schoology. So you're going to have to do it this way. Um, programmers, whenever you do programming and you need to take the square root of something, this is what you would put. That's exactly how you would do it whenever you're programming. So if you plan on going in that field, this is how you would do it. Um, but that's why it makes sense whenever we put it in the Schoology that way. Okay, geometric mean and right triangles. If the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse, then all three triangles are similar to each other. So what that means is over here we have a right triangle. Like, this is the original right triangle here. Okay, and then we drew an altitude of that right triangle from here to its opposite side, which created another 90 degree angle. So whenever that happens, it creates three different triangles. The main big triangle, so this one, and then it has this one here, and then it has the one on the right hand side. So it has three separate right triangles and they are all three similar to each other. Okay, so if we were to split it into three different triangles, so this is my main triangle. Which is this guy. And then we have our left hand triangle. I should really do that one in blue. Hold on, because it would make more sense. It's going to be blue, but now it showed up as green, but blue and yellow overlapping makes green. So that's this triangle. I guess I should do it green. And then, of course, you have this triangle here. And I'm just going to outline it, because otherwise if I fill it in all the way, you won't see the yellow anymore. So that's this guy. And they're just um, oriented. They're all rotated and even reflected so that they will all show you the similar pieces. Now, instead of trying to tear this apart in your head and being able to see the three individual triangles, which is insanely complicated, um, there are methods to solving these. So you create these three different triangles. So the altitude theorem is the T method. And what happens is um, you take the altitude squared is equal to part of the hypotenuse times the other part of the hypotenuse. So it looks like this. 
Okay, so the altitude squared is equal to part of the hypotenuse over the other part of the hypotenuse. So what that means is you are given a triangle that looks like this. This is my right angle. Then this is my altitude. I'm going to call it x just because. And then we will say that this left-hand side is, I don't know, uh, 5. And this right-hand side is uh, 20. Why not? So what happens is that the altitude, you're going to square it. So you're going to square this x, and it's going to be equal to one part of the hypotenuse, so this part, over the other part of the hypotenuse, which is this part. And if you look, it kind of makes an upside down T, so it just kind of depends how the triangle is oriented, but that's why it's called the T method, because it kind of looks like a T. Um, the leg theorem, or the L theorem. So this one is a little bit different. And so it says that the leg squared is equal to part of the hypotenuse closest to the leg times the entire hypotenuse. I guess I should put that this is part of the hypotenuse closest to the leg. And it'll be the same for, um, for all leg theorems. Um, the, this was split in two to match the top ones, and so the this one would be that b squared is equal to x times h, and the right one would be that a squared is equal to y times c, but I personally think you would see it better if you saw an example of what that might look like. So in other words, if you had a triangle that looked like... this, and then um, let's say that we're looking for that, and then this is 5, this is 10, which means the entire thing is 15, right? That you would set it up as the leg squared, so this guy is equal to the part of the hypotenuse closest to the leg, so this guy times the entire hypotenuse, so the whole thing. So if you look, it kind of forms an L, sort of. Um, but that's why it's called L method 2, because it kind of looks like uh, an L, but plus it also uses the leg. And so it could have also looked from the other direction as well. You can use the other leg. So let's say we were looking for this one, and same scenario, this is 5, 10, and 15. You would have the exact same problem. So you would have that this leg is equal to, well, it's not the exact same problem. It's a similar problem. Oops, that was supposed to be pink. This part, because it's the part closest to the leg, right, is equal to the entire hypotenuse. It has to be the part closest to the leg. All right, so examples, because I think you're going to understand it better this way anyway. All right, so the first thing that we want to solve for is Z, just because it's the easiest thing in the world to solve for. T method is the easiest. So let's solve for Z first using the T method. So it's going to be Z squared is equal to 8 times 25. It's the easiest one to do. So the altitude squared is equal to each individual part of the hypotenuse. So z squared, 8 times 25 is 200. You need to take the square root of both sides, which means that z is 200 is the same thing as 100 times 2, which means it's 100 times the square root of 2. The square root of 100 is 10. So z is 10 square roots of 2. Again, in Schoology, you would need to write 10 sqrt, parentheses 2, like that. Now that's z. 
So to solve for x, we're going to use L method. So remember that one, you do the leg times the part of the hypotenuse that's closer to you times the entire hypotenuse. Now this one doesn't tell it to me, but you can add it. So 25 plus 8 is 33. So I have to do x squared is equal to 8 times 33. 8 times 33 is 264. Take the square root of both sides. And 264 is the same thing as 4 times 66, which means that it's the square root of 4 times square root of 66, which means it's 2 square roots of 66. And then, of course, in Schoology, you would do 2 SQRT 66. And lastly, for y, we're going to do L method as well. So we're looking at y, and then the part that's closest to it is equal times the whole thing. So y squared is equal to 25 times 33. 25 times 33 is 825. Take the square root of both sides. y is equal to the square root of 825, which is the same thing as 25 times 33. And the square root of 25, oops, times the square root of 33. The square root of 25 is 5. And then, of course, in Schoology, you would write 5 SQRT. 33. Last one, um, and of course the T method is the easiest one, so we're going to solve for X first. So we're going to do T method, we're going to solve for X using the T method. So remember, it's the altitude squared. So in this case, we have 12 squared is equal to the, the two different pieces of the hypotenuse, which is x and 9. You multiply those together. So that's 144 is equal to 9x divided by 9 on both sides, which means that x is 16. And then you could do it either y or z next. They're both about equally as easy. This x is now 16. And you know we're going to end up needing the whole thing, so it's 25 for the whole thing. So y, we're going to use the L method. Remember that's the leg times the part closest to the leg. The y, I'm sorry, y squared is equal to the part close to the leg times the whole hypotenuse. So y squared is equal to 16 times 25. y squared is equal to 400. Take the square root of both, which means that y, the square root of 400 is actually a perfect square. It's 20. And then for Z, we're going to use the L method again. Just now we're going to have Z squared is equal to 9 times 25. So Z squared is equal to 9 times 25 is 225. Take the square root of both sides. Z is equal to, you can take the square root of 225 and it's 15. That's the end of our notes.